Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Today we are going to discuss the second gut associated gland, which is the liver. By the end of this lecture, you will be able to discuss the liver in many points. You will be able to describe the stromal content of the liver. Moreover, we are going to know that the liver cell is called hepatocyte and can, you can classify hepatocyte organization. You can also give the histological feature of hepatocyte. You can also correlate hepatocyte to their function, structure adaptation of the hepatocyte or the liver cell to their function. More than that, correlate the structural function of the cell lining blood dilated blood vessel which is called hepatic sinusoid. Also, you can, are going to have a structure called the space of this and you are going to be able to discuss the structure and the importance of it. And now, finally, you are going to describe the bile flow channel. Let's start our lecture today to the, the liver. And we mentioned that the liver is one of the gut-associated gland besides the liver gland and pancreas. Pancreas was discussed in the previous lecture while the liver gland, you studied it in the musculoskeletal 3 module. Now, let's just talk about our gut-associated gland, the liver. The liver is considered the largest gland of the body. It is considered as a compound tubular gland. Liver is going to have, as regarding the function of having both exocrine and endocrine function. Exocrine function means release its secretion through the gut, while endocrine function meaning releasing its secretion into the bloodstream. I have to ask you, does the liver as endocrine function release hormone? No, it, it is called endocrine function because it releases its secretion into the blood circulation. So what does it release into the blood circulation? It releases plasma protein. What about exocrine function? Can you give an example for its exocrine function? Yes, it releases make pile and release it through a duct. So pile secretion is considered one of the exocrine function of the liver. Now let's go to the histology of the liver discuss the liver. As the histology of the liver, the liver is a parenchymatous organ or highly cellular organ, so it is classified into stroma and parenchyma. Do you know stroma? It is the connective tissue coverage which supports the liver. It will be in the three forms, which is capsule, trabecule or septa, and finally reticular connective tissue which will be supportive to the hepatocyte or to the liver cell. Let's talk about the stroma, which will be represented in the capsule, trabecule, and reticular connective tissue. Let's start our talking about the capsule. Capsule here, it is a connective tissue capsule, which is called, from the anatomy, it is called capsule of Gleason. It is a very dense connective tissue covered. Our liver is covered by protonium. This connective tissue coverage would be more thickened at the entry at the entry of the blood supply to the, to the liver. This entry is called porta, porta hepatis. This area of thickening of the connective tissue will start to give trabecule or septa to divide the liver into loops and lobules. Now, trabecule or septa is going to give thin septa in human, but it will be very thick in animal. So do you think if I give you a human specimen, you can ident easily identify loops and the lobule of the liver? No, because the interlobular septa and the trabecule will be very thin. But if I give you a specimen of animals, you, you can evidently or clearly observe the presence of septa, which classified it into loops and the lobule. And finally, after the connective tissue septa, which divide the, loop, uh, the liver into loops and the lobule, we are going to have Connective tissues, uh, connective tissues, trabecule and septa will form reticular connective tissue. This reticular connective tissue is formed of reticular cell and reticular fiber. Reticular fiber is characterized by being short, branching, and, and a smoothing fiber, making a reticulum, making a network. Why? In order to support and hold, heal the hepatocyte or the liver cell in their place so they can do their function. So, the, our connective tissue coverage or stroma of the liver will be formed in three parts, capsule, septa or trabecule, and finally, reticular connective tissue. Now, let's us go and talk about our parenchyma. Our parenchyma will be in the form of... Our parenchyma will be in the form of a liver cell. Our liver cell is called 
excellent it is called hepatocyte or liver cell so liver cell or hepatocyte are equivalent name let's talk about the arrangement of hepatocyte in the liver according to different departments we make classification of hepatocyte according to their organization we are going to see hepatocyte lying in structure called liver acinus we are going to see hepatocyte classified as portal lobule and the histological one which is the classic hepatic lobule now let's start with one of the important classification of hepatocyte organization which is the classic hepatic lobule what is the hepatic lobule classic hepatic lobule appear as a hexagonal in shape as you see here in this figure or in this third photo here classic hepatic lobule is considered as a hexagonal shape hexagonal in shape it is six dimensional structure with central vein vein in the center of this lobule so the center of the classic hepatic lobule is a vein and it is called central vein so what is a classic hepatic lobule is according to the shape this is a hexagonal in shape containing at the center a central vein around the central vein Hepatocytes are, are arranged as the sun rays. Hepatocytes are arranged in cordes, which these cordes are branching and anastomosing, starting from the central vein to the periphery of the classic hepatic lobule. So, again, classic hepatic lobule is hexagonal in shape with the central vein at the center. Hepatocytes or liver cell arranged around the center of it as the sun rays. They are arranged as a branching and an smoothing cord or plate radiating from the central vein to the periphery. What is the thickness of the cord? The thickness of the cord is nearly one to two cells maximum. They are separated by a dilated blood vessel called the blood sinusoid. So here we are going to have hepatocyte. Hepat, can you see here? Can you see here? This is hepatocyte. Hepatocyte is arranged in plate. Plate is thickness is one to two cell in thickness. They are separated by a blood dilated blood space. This dilated blood space is called blood sinusoid. At the periphery or at the corner of the classic hepatic lobule, we will find the area of entry of blood vessel to the classic hepatic lobule. So this area is called portal area. So what we need to know about the classic hepatic lobule, the shape, the shape which is hexagonal in shape. In the center, there is central vein at the center. Hepatocyte is arranged in plate which is branching and smoothing. The thickness of the plate is one to two cell thick. These plates are separated by blood sinusoid. And as a periphery of the classic hepatic lobule, there is a portal area which contains the blood and venous supply, lymphatic supply, and the spiral duct which drain the bile out from the classic hepatic lobule. Let's see a photo for an uh, animated photo for you. Here in this photo, we are seeing scanning electron microscopic photo for the classic hepatic lobule. What can we see here in the classic hepatic lobule? We can see it clearly, it's a shape. Can we see here? It's a shape. The shape which is a hexagonal in shape. What is in the center of the classic hepatic lobule? There is a central vein. Can you see clearly the arrangement of classic hepatic lobule uh, of hepatocyte in classic hepatic arranged hepatocyte in the classic hepatic lobule? Yes, you can see it like sun ray arrangement. It is arranged in plate branching and then smoothing arising from the central vein towards the periphery. What can you see else at the periphery? At the periphery is the entry of blood supply and exit. So it is an portal area. So at the periphery there is portal area. At the corner of a classic hepatic lobule, there is a portal tract area. Let's see this on a diagram. The same is also seen here in this diagram. In this diagram there is evident a classic hepatic lobule arrangement. This is the hexagonal shape of the classic hepatic lobule. In the center of classic hepatic lobule, there is a central vein from which arise plates of hepatocyte which is arranged in branching and an smoothing cords separated by the hepatic blood sinusoid. At the periphery of this classic hepatic lobule, we are going at the corner, we are going to have an area of entry and exit 
of blood supply and the file. This area is called portal tract area. The photo for the classic hepatic lobule. You can see that it is hexagonal in shape with a central vein at the center. Hepatocyte is arranged in plate or cords with, with, class, with blood sinusoids separating it. At the periphery, there is a portal tract area. At the periphery, there is a portal tract area here. Hepatocytes from each other are separated by blood sinusoid. What can we find in the portal tract area? At the portal tract area, we know that the blood supply of the liver is the word blood supply. By blood supply, it has a branch from the GRT, which is a portal vein, and a branch from hepatic artery, which carry oxygenated blood. So, here we are going to supply this blood, both blood supply to the classic hepatic lobule in order to get its oxygen and filter the blood coming from the gastrointestinal tract. So we are going to have a branch of hepatic artery and branch of portal vein, which is the widest, as it is the vein. Also, bile is secreted by the liver and go out from the classic hepatic lobule by the duct. So we are going to have a branch of the bile duct at the periphery or in the portal tract area. And the lymphatic, lymphatic supply or lymphatic accumulation will be accumulated in lymphatic vessel and it will be a branch of lymphatic vessel in portal tract area. So what can we find at the corner of classic hepatic lobule? We can find a portal tract area. What is present in this portal tract area? We can find blood supply, artery and vein and bile duct with some lymphatic vessel. What is the blood supply? We are going to have a branch from the artery, which is a branch from hepatic artery. Blood from the gastrointestinal tract will be carried by a branch from the portal vein. And the duct will be synthesized and poured into a branch of bile duct and some lymphatic visit. Again, what is the content of the portal tract? We are going to have branch of hepatic artery, branch of the portal vein, branch of the bile duct, and lymphatic visit. So, how does the blood go from the portal tract to go through the hepatic lobule? We can see that here we are having the portal tract area. This portal tract area containing the artery, which is branch of hepatic artery, the vein, which is branch of portal vein. Blood inside this artery and vein is going to go from periphery to the center. They are going to go first through the classic, uh, blood, uh, classic blood sinusoid, classic hepatic blood sinusoid, and then go into the central vein in the center. So blood go from outside to inside, from the periphery to the center. This is as regard the direction of blood flow, which start from the periphery to the center. What about the direction of bile? Where does bile is being synthesized? It is synthesized in the hepatocyte, which, which is inside the liver classic hepatic lobule. Hepatocyte synthesizes this bile and it's having to go out of the liver. So direction of blood flow is in the opposite of the blood. It will start from the center to go to the periphery to go to the portal tract area. So blood supply would be from the periphery to the center, while bile senses or bile flow would be from the periphery to the portal tract. So by this, the blood supply of the liver is through two circulation, through the hepatic artery which carry oxygenated blood and through portal vein which carry blood coming from the gastro absorbed blood which is coming from the gastrointestinal tract and both of them is going to be mixed within each other where in the hepatic blood sinusoid before going to the central vein can you see we see here we are going here to have this red vessel which is a branch of hepatic artery and the blue one which is a branch of portal vein giving a blood supply which will be mixed with in the blood channel in between hepatocytes. This blood channel is called blood sinusoid. It is a dilated blood channel. Okay. So, uh, liver is considered to have a two source of blood. The first one is the portal vein which nearly carries 75% of the blood. It is very rich in nutrient, uh, nutrient rich but it is oxygen pool because it is coming from the gastrointestinal tract it's coming from the viscera while that which carry 
oxygenated blood supply will be coming from the heart, which is the hepatic artery, and it carries nearly 25% of the blood supply of the liver. It is nutrient poor, but on the opposite, it is oxygen rich blood supply, which is coming from the heart, from the aorta. Both the two blood branches from the portal vein and hepatic artery will be mixed in hepatic blood sinusoid within the classic hepatic lobule to be drained after that into the central vein and finally go to the hepatic vein and finally to the inferior Here we are going to have portal tract area. What can you see in the portal tract area? You can find branch, this one. What is this blue one? It is branch of, yes, portal vein. And the red one, it is a branch of hepatic artery which carry oxygenated blood. Both of them is going to get branch in the portal tract area both blood supply from the two branches will be mixed in the hepatic blood sinusoid. Where can we find the hepatic blood sinusoid? In yes, hexagonal shape, classic hepatic lobule. And also they are drained in the center of the classic hepatic lobule, which contain central vein. Excellent. Central vein will collect the blood and then give it to hepatic vein and go to the inferior vena cava to go through the circulation. By this, we have finished one of the classification of hepatic hepatocyte organization. We mentioned before that we mentioned before that we have three classification of hepatocyte organization. We mentioned according to the structure, we are going to have a classification called the classic hepatic lobule, and we discuss its structure and its content. Now we are going to have another classification which is liver acinus. What is the arrangement of hepatocyte in the liver acinus? It will be arranged in the form of this. What is this? It is a diamond shaped mass containing what in the center? Classic hepatic lobule was hexagonal and containing central vein in the center. Here we are going to have a central core here at the center of the liver acinus. So what is the shape of liver acinus? It is diamond in shape. It is a mass from how many classic hepatic lobules? From a two adjacent classic hepatic lobules. This is one and this is one. So it is a diamond mass of two adjacent classic hepatic lobules containing the center, containing the center of the liver acinus, central vascular core. What is meant by that? We mean that at the periphery of classic hepatic lobule, we say that we are going to have two portal tract area. This portal tract area giving what? Giving a blood subloid, giving artery and vein. This blood subloid will give here a central branching and go to the liver. Does this portal tract area will supply all the classic hepatic lobule? No, they find that it will supply this area only. By making joining this area together, it makes the shape of diamond shape of classic hepatic lobule and the blood supply as we mentioned before will move from the periphery to the center i have to ask you some question as the blood supply here going from the periphery to the center can you guess which area will receive the most nutrient and most oxygenation and which area receives the least this is where the blood supply starts so the nearby cell here, which is adjacent adjacent to the classic, which is adjacent to the vascular core, will receive the highest oxygenation and the highest nutrition. And after that, blood supply will go to the center. Here, the cells which is nearer to the central vein will receive the least nutrition and the least oxygenation. Okay, let's see, see this on another slide. Here, in this photo, this is part of classic hepatic lobule containing at the periphery an area which is called portal tract area. And in here, this is the center of classic hepatic lobule, which is central vein. Excellent. This portal tract area will give supply to this triangular area to make with another adjacent classic hepatic lobule a diamond shape. This portal tract area or this vascular core will give blood supply to all this area, which is numbered one, two, and three. Can you guess 
which one will receive the highest nutrition, oxygenation and the nutrition? It will be the area in zone 1. And the least nutrition and the oxygenation will be in zone 3. Can I ask you, if I have an injury to the heart and there is decreased oxygenation and the blood supply, can you guess which zone is going to be affected more? Yes, it is zone number 3. Why? Because it is already having least oxygenation and least blood supply. So if I cut the blood supply, it will be the first to, to be affected. Okay, another question. If I, uh, I have a patient take toxin, which zone is going to be more affected? Yes, it is zone 1 because it is the first zone to receive this toxin. So the peripheral zone will be affected by toxin while the zone number 3 will be affected by decreased oxygenation and the decreased nutrition. So can you guess if there will be a difference in the organelle present in hepatocyte in zone 1 and zone 3? Definitely yes. Because zone 1 is give, gaining many nutrition, is having many nutrition. So this hepatocyte is able to synthesize more glycogen or more plasma protein. Let's see. Here is going to have zone 1, which is closer to the central vascular core. So contain, which so it, it, sub, it is supplied by high oxygen and high nutrition. So it will be able to synthesize glycogen and plasma protein. In between zone 1 and 2, we are going to have zone 1 and zone 3, we are going to have zone 2. Zone 2 is surrounding zone 1. It has less blood supply than zone 1. It is intermediate between zone 1 and zone 3 so it has intermediate range of metabolic function the last one is number 3 zone number 3 it is nearer to what it is nearer to central vein it is far from vascular core so it has least oxygenation and the least nutrition but it contains high smooth endoplasmic reticulum so it will be functioning mainly in drug detoxification can it synthesize uh, glycogen? No, because it has the least blood supply. So it will be concerned with glycolysis, not glycogen formation. It will going to use glu uh, glucose to hair usage. Then after that, can you guess if I have ischemic necrosis, which zone is going to be affected more? Excellent, it will be zone 3 because it has the least blood supply. Now let's go to discuss hepatocyte itself what is the histological feature of hepatocyte hepatocyte as we see in this photo is a large cell it is a very active cell here we can see hepatocyte it is a large polygonal cell is it active or inactive it is active so we are going to have a vesicular nucleus we are going to have central rounded vesicular nucleus as it is very active and working 24 hour so it needs more nucleus, more DNA for its action. So we can find that about 25% of the liver cell can be by nucleic containing two nucleus. As we can see here, about 25% of the cell is containing by nucleated. When we are going to look at the cytoplasm and discuss it, it will be acidophilic. Why it is acidophilic? Because it is very active. It's like a factory. So containing numerous mitochondria does it contain mitochondria only it contain most of the organelle it synthesizes protein so there is a good amount of RER which appear as some basophilic granules so the major cytoplasm is acidophilic but it can demonstrate some basophilic granules what about glycogen you mentioned that liver store glycogen and fat so is this will dissolve during the preparation of the slide so during the preparation, they are going to be dissolved, leaving the cytoplasm vacuolated. Can you see here? Is it clear that it is homogeneous, acidophilic? No, it appears as it have spots, empty spots. So it is vacuolated cytoplasm. Why? Due to dissolved glycogen and fat droplet. As we mentioned, the cytoplasm is acidophilic with some basophilic granules. It appear vacuolated. 
Can we see what causes cytoplasm acidophilic and vacuolate with some basophilic granules by electron microscopic? Electron microscopic photo mean what is the organelle present inside this cell? In the liver, you are going to find all the organelle you know in, inside the liver cell. Let's start and take one organelle, one organelle. What about mitochondria? It is a factory. So mitochondria is numerous inside the cell. It may need thousands per cell. Why you need more mitochondria? Because the liver cell is very active cell. It nearly, nearly working 24 hours for senses of different components you need for senses of bile, for senses of plasma protein, for dealing with the food you eat. So, and as it synthesizes a plasma protein for secretion, so it is going to have an organelle called, yes, excellent, it is going to have an organelle which is called rough endoplasmic reticulum responsible for the basophilic granules. As we are going to have rough endoplasmic reticulum, we need gold G for exportation of this pl plasma protein synthesized inside rough endoplasmic reticulum. What about drug detoxification, glycolysis, gluconeogenesis, and bile senses? For this, we are going to need the organelle which is called smooth endoplasmic reticulum. As liver cell need also the organelle which is lysosomes because it is going to deal with fat, it's going to deal with carbohydrate, it is going to make phagocytosis to filter the blood coming from the gastrointestinal tract. It is also need to deal with fat to synthesize bile. So it needs an organelle called peroxisomes which is responsible for beta oxidation of fatty acid in order to synthesize bile from it. For the shape, we need a cytoskeleton, which is actin intermediate filament. Also, we are going to have inclusion. We are going to store carbohydrate in the form of glycogen. Also, we are going to synthesize fat, for example, synthesize low-density lipoprotein or high-density lipoprotein. Also, as we are going to have lysosomes due to the due to the process of eating and lysosome degradation, we are going to have remnant or residual body of lysosomes, which is called lipofusin pigment. Now, let's go to see an electron microscopic photo for this two sites. Can you see here? We are going to have the nucleus. This cell, as we mentioned before, may be binucleated. Why my, what is meant by binucleated? 25% of hepatocyte contain two nucleus. We are going to have numerous mitochondria, reaching nearly 1,000 mitochondria per Cell. We are going to have rough endoplasmic reticulum, which is, which is this network. Rough endoplasmic reticulum for what? For senses of plasma protein. Free ribosome, as this cell is regenerative cell, can regenerate, so it will need free ribosomes for its division. We can find fat droplet. We can find also the small plaque dot of rosette-like accumulation of glycogen inside the liver cell. Now, can you guess what function of hepatocyte? We mentioned before that liver is going, or hepatocyte has two functions, exocrine function and endocrine function. What about exocrine function? It will secrete bile through bile duct, which will help in fat absorption. What else? Endocrine function makes secretion and release it into the blood circulation. Like what? Like secretion of glucose. It makes glycogen. And during fasting, it will make glycolysis of this glycogen and release glucose into the circulation. Moreover, that says it synthesizes plasma protein like albumin, like globulin, fibrinogen into the blood directly. And this plasma protein is synthesized by rough endoplasmic reticulum. What about lipoprotein like LDL and VLDL or HDL? It will be synthesized by incorporation of smooth endoplasmic reticulum and rough endoplasmic reticulum. RAR will be used for senses of protein, while smooth endoplasmic reticulum is responsible for senses of lipid. What about drug detoxification? Many drugs are detoxified inside the liver, such as barbiturate and alcohol. This drug makes the function, one of the functions of the liver, which is detoxification. So are going to have a smooth endoplasmic reticulum in addition, also, 
to peroxisome which will detoxify alcohol else it having a storage function storage for what storage of iron and metabolism of iron what else it will have a metabolic function which will deal with food stuff like carbohydrate lipid cholesterol and help in urea formation to be released into the kidney to be secreted through the kidney also it store as it has fat it has to store and convert many vitamins such as A, D, E, and K vitamins. Okay, this was a general scheme for the function of hepatocyte, including exocrine function, endocrine function, metabolic detoxification, storage function, which include includes storage of iron, storage storage of some vitamin. Now hepatocyte is going after saying the ultra structure of hepatocyte. We are going to say hepatocyte phases. What is meant by hepatocyte phases? It means that hepatocyte is going to have three phases. One phase will face pile canaliculoid. The other one will face blood sinusoid. The third one will, will face a neighboring hepatocyte. Let's see what does this mean. It means that we mentioned that hepatocyte, this is hepatocyte, is a large polygonal cell. How many phase here? We are going to have cell and cell hepatocyte synthesize bile and pour it into a bile duct. Can you see here? This is a hepatocyte, so number one, and this is number two. Both of them are synthesizing bile and secrete it into this green structure, which is bile canaliculoid. So this is one phase, one side of hepatocyte, hepatocyte and hepatocyte facing a bile canaliculoid. This is the first phase, which is facing bile canaliculoid. Neighboring hepatocyte, this one, and the second one is here. Hepatocyte facing another hepatocyte. Hepatocyte facing another hepatocyte. So this is the second phase, other hepatocyte. We mentioned that hepatocyte is phase is, is arranged in plate, and this is the plate. This is the plate of hepatocyte is facing a blood vessel, and this is the blood vessel. So we are going to have another phase which is facing a blood sinusoid or the blood vessel. So how many phases does hepatocyte have? It is going to have three phases. The first one is facing bile canaliculoid. The second one is hepatocyte neighboring or facing another hepatocyte. The third one is hepatocyte facing dilated blood vessel which is called blood sinusoid we are going to have now let's see this is a photo of adjacent hepatocyte here we are going to have a hepatocyte this one and here is another hepatocyte so we are going to have this face is facing another hepatocyte so this hepatocyte are joining together this is the first phase where Surface hepatocyte facing each other. Both hepatocytes are joining together by a structure called junction complex. It is a strong communication. What is junction complex? It is formed of three junctions. What are they? They are zonular occlusions, zonular adherence, and desmosomes. This was the first phase. What else? Is there another phase appearing here? Yes. Can you see here? This hepatocyte and this one, this one, and this one, and this one. Can you see here in this region, both hepatocytes are opening into canal, canal, and this one with this one are also opening into another canal. When does hepatocyte open into canal? When they are synthesizing bile and release it into canals. So this is a phase of hepatocyte, this one and this one, and this one with this one. These are hepatocytes which are facing bile canaliculus. Let's see. Again here, we are going here to have a surface facing bile canaliculus. 
What can be demonstrated here? It appears that when we are going to magnify this region, which is the region of bicanaliculi, let's see what happened in this region. We can see this. We can see that both this one is a hepatocyte and this one is another hepatocyte. Is there any cells another line in the canal? No, it is just a hepatocyte releasing a finger-like projection which is called microvilli. So the face surface facing the bile canaliculi is lined by hepatocyte itself and showing a few microvilli. Why? To increase the surface area for release of bile. I have to ask you a question. This hepatocyte is going to synthesize bile. Why does this bile doesn't digest the plasma membrane of hepatocyte? Because it is prevented from being leakage into the intercellular space. How? By going to have at the periphery of the bile canaliculi zonula occludens here at this region where the arrow is present here this region you can see here they are firmly closed by what by zonula occludens in order to prevent leakage of the bile into the inner intercellular space and preventing digestion of the hepatocyte or the liver cell itself now we have talked about two surfaces hepatocyte facing other hepatocyte and are joined together by junction complex. Hepatocyte facing bile canaliculi and at, at the peripheral of the bile canaliculi, they are joined by zonula occludens. Now we are going to have the third phase, which is facing a blood sinusoid. We are going to have hepatocyte facing a dilated blood vessel called blood sinusoid. What can we see here? We are going here to have a hepatocyte. Side. Can you see that this is our hepatocyte large cell facing blood sinusoid from th this is one blood sinusoid and the other one blood sinusoid. Can you see here the red blood cell inside the blood sinusoid? What is prominent for this? We are going to have here this region. What can you see? This region. What can you see here? You can see here that it is containing many long microvilli. Can you guess why it contains many long microvilli? Microvilli means that there is a projection. So it is for increasing the surface area. Let's see why there is need why we need long microvilli for increasing the surface area in the surface facing the blood sinusoid. Let's see here and talk about the blood sinusoid. What is a blood sinusoid? You can see here that this was a central vein and at the periphery was having portal tract area. Blood supply was flowing from the portal tract area to go into a minute channel, small channel, dilated blood capillaries in between cords of hepatic, hepatic cells or hepatocyte. This is dilated or minute channel which is a dilated blood capillary is called a blood sinusoid. So let's talk about a blood sinusoid. It is a dilated blood capillary or minute blood channel in between cords of hepatocytes. This hepatic blood sinusoid is going to conduct blood from the portal tract area to the central vein, from the periphery to the center. As we are going to see here, we are going to convey blood from the periphery, which is containing portal tract area, to the center where the central vein is present. Blood sinusoid is considered as a blood channel in between hepatocytes. This is cords of hepatocyte here in between are separated by a channel containing blood sinusoid. This is a channel which is containing blood sinusoid. It carries blood from the portal area to the central vein as again it carries blood from the portal tract area here to the central vein from the periphery to the center. So let's uh, what are the lining epithelium of the blood sinusoid? Blood sinusoid is a dilated capillary channel. It is a dilated blood capillary channel like that. Lined by what? It is lined mainly by endothelium resting on basement membrane. But what about the basement membrane? Is it continuous? No, it is not continuous. It is discontinuous basement membrane. 
and endothelial cell is not joining each other. There is a wide space in between endothelial cell. Why this happen? Why we are going to have the blood sinusoid lying by endothelium with wide spaces or slit light opening and resting on a discontinuous basement membrane? In order to allow for large molecule in order to pass in between the endothelium of the blood vessel. Let's talk one of this cell uh, of the endothelial cell and magnifying it. We are going here to have the endothelial cell. What is the shape of endothelium? Endothelium is a simple squamous epithelium resting on basement membrane. What about the basement membrane of this endothelium? It is discontinuous basement membrane and there is wide or gaps in between the cell in order to allow macromolecules or like plasma protein or fat in order to pass in between the cells. What about the endothelial cell? Does it have a pulse or fenestry? Yes, we are going to have a fenestry, small, tiny, small hole inside the endothelium itself. It is a smaller channel and it make it like look like a sieve plate. It make it look like a sieve plate. So what are the blood sinusoid lined with? They are lined with endothelium, which is a flat epithelium resting on a discontinuous basement membrane. It is going to have a flat root chip nucleus in the center. It is resting on discontinuous basement membrane. It is perforated by fenestry, which make it give its shape safe blade. It is not covered by the diaphragm. Why? To allow large molecules to pass in between the endothelium and the space of this, which are going to talk about. How does this spaces in between white cells separated endothelial cells are protected? Can you guess which cell protect we need to protect? We need to find a cell which is called macrophage. Here in between the endothelium cell, we are going to have a cell resting in between endothelial cell. Why? To protect the liver from entrance of any foreign body. This macrophage in between the endothelial cell is called Kufor cell. So we are going here to have two cell types. The main type is the endothelial cell which is separated and due to it is separated we are going to have one of the macrophage cell which is Kufar cell. It is a large phagocytic cell. Now let's talk about this Kufar cell, but let's remind you with some structure. What are the lining epithelium of blood sinusoid? What is the lining cell of the blood sinusoid? They are endothelial cell. What else? They are von Kufar cell. Let's revise again endothelial cell. Endothelial cell is a flat cell which is widely separated with both gap from each other. This fenestrated cell contains fenestry and pore that is not covered by diaphragm. Late diaphragm Y to allow plasma protein to pass through. There are spaces in between the endothelial cell. The presence of fenestry giving the sinusoidal, uh, the, uh, the, giving the endothelium safe blade like appearance. Can you see here that this is the endothelium containing pore? This is a beer like a sieve plate. Why this fenestry leg diaphragm in order to allow passage of large plasma protein and chylomicron from the that sinusoid to outside area of connective tissue, which is called space of this. We are going to have to protect the space in between endothelial cell by, by, by one of the macrophage cell, which is called the macrophage, if you are memorizing macrophage, they are going to have the same description. It is one of the large phagocytic cells. It is a large one. What is the origin of this cell it, as macrophage? It will be originated from blood monocyte. It's going to have large regular nucleus. What about the shape of the cell? Is it rounded cell? No, it is going to have few surface microvilli and pseudobudia. Why it is going to have pseudobudia? Because this cell make phagocytosis. Excellent. As it will make phagocytosis, so it will need the organelle, which is called lysosomes. For senses of lysosome, we are going to have rough endoplasmic reticulum with Golgi apparatus. 
uh, after making phagocytosis, you are going to see phagocytic vessel inside the womb gopher cells. This cell, an electron microscopic photo for the cells which is eating cell which is called von Kufer cell. It is a macrophage. Can you see its shape? It is a large cell in the wall of the blood sinusoid. It is going to have an hands which is called pseudobudia. It's going to have few microvilli. It's having large irregular nucleus. It's going to have many lysosome and phagocytic vesicle. So what can you guess? What is the function? of von Kufer cell. Can you guess function? Yes, it is macrophage, so its function is phagocytosis. Phagocytosis of what? Of any foreign body entering from the GIT like bacteria, like virus. It's liver one of the function of the liver is phagocytic of old RBCs. After destruction of old RBCs, it will reuse the released iron which was present in hemoglobin. So, what is the main function of von Kufer cell? Phagocytosis. Phagocytosis of what? A foreign body of bacteria of old RBCs. It also helps to destruct any debris from the gut, so prevent obstruction of the blood sinusoid. It is a blood vessel. Some debris may coming from the gut. This cell, von Kufer cell, will phagocytosis. Phagocytose this debris and will clear the space and keeping the blood sinusoid patent. It is macrophage is considered with the most or or strong antigen presenting cells. Don't mean this cofar cell is a macrophage and macrophage is a strong antigen presenting cell. Now let's talk about the space between the blood sinusoid and hepatocyte. We mentioned before that. We are going to have hepatocyte arranged in codes or plate, which is branching and smoothing together. This is hepatocyte arranged in plate. And in between the plate, we are going to have hepatic blood sinusoid. The space between hepatocyte and the blood sinusoid, this space, is called space of this. So what is the space of this? It is the space between the hepatocyte and the sinusoidal wall. What to find in this place? What can we find? We can find here that hepatocyte need to increase the surface area so it will make microvilli. So you will find in this space microvilli from hepatocyte. What else? When you are filtering blood, we are going to find here the filtered blood which is containing plasma. So we are going to have plasma here. So what is the second content of space of this? It is plasma. We are going to have here one important cell. We are going to find here one of the major cells you have to know. This cell is called I2 cells. This cell is going to be cells, large cell, which is storing fat. This cell is found where? In blood sinusoid? No, it is found in space of this. It is an important to know. It is a fat storing cell, and as it is store fat, it is going to store vitamin A inside it. What else? We are going, maybe we can find Kufar cell, but Kufar cell is one of the lining of space of this. To make support for this space, we are going to have reticular fiber, which is type 3 collagen, and maybe you can find nerve fiber. So what is mainly the component not to be missed for in the space of this? You are going to find microvilli. You are going to find plasma. You are going to find Kufer uh, I2 cells. Don't miss I2 cells. Again, what is the component of the space of this? Microvilli, plasma, I2 cell, and reticular fiber. So what is I2 cell? It is a large cell containing what? Containing lipid droplet. As it contains lipid droplet, it will store vitamin A. What is the importance of why I, this I2 cell? Does it important come from being lipid storage and vitamin A? No. This cell, when become stimulated in some disease, it will be proliferated to fibroblasts leading to fibrosis of the liver. The cell is the major cause of the liver fibrosis and causing many diseases. 
So cell is present where? Excellent. In the space of this, it is present inside space of this, not inside the blood sinusoid. It is present inside the space containing lipid droplet, containing vitamin A. What is the importance of this cell? This cell, when proliferate or stimulated, it will differentiate into fibroblasts and leading to fibrosis. Let's see here. Here we are going to have liver cell. This is liver cell. And this is another liver cell. Here you are going to have a blood capillary or blood vessel. This blood vessel is called blood sinusoid. Excellent. What is the lining of blood sinusoid? Yes, endothelium. And this large cell in the lumen. This cell is called Kufar cell. Excellent. What is the space in between the endothelium and the hepatocyte? This is space. This space is called space of this. Excellent. This is the space of this. What is the component of a space of this? This space of this. It contains plasma. Excellent. It contains plasma. What else? It contains microvilli of hepatocyte. What is the important cell here which contain fat? This is called I2 cell. It again. We are going here to have hepatocyte. This is one hepatocyte and another hepatocyte facing blood sinusoid. What is the endothelium lining of blood sinusoid? The first and major one is endothelium. The second one is a large cell called Kufar cell. The space in between blood sinusoid and hepatocyte, this white space is called space of this containing plasma, containing Containing microvilli from hepatocyte, this surface microvilli from hepatocyte, it contains one of the important cells, which is I2 cell. Okay, the same is here. We are going here to have hepatocyte facing blood sinusoid, which is a purple in color. We are going to have here a space in between hepatocyte. In between, we are going to have its channel. This is the face which facing the green structure, which is the bile. The face which is facing the blood sinusoid is related to, to sinusoidal face, which will be related to space of. So, what is the importance or what's the function of the space of this? Space of this is mainly function is in F filtered plasma, which allow it to come in contact with the liver cell, so allowing exchange of material between hepatocyte and blood. And one of the more important of the space of this is preventing the collapse of the wall of the blood sinusoid. How does it allow or prevent the collapse of the wall of the blood sinusoid? Can you guess? Yes, one of the most important factors which prevent the collapse of the blood sinusoid is the presence of reticular fiber for support. Also, the presence of microvilli of hepatocyte. This makes the pressure inside the blood sinusoid similar to that of the space of this, allowing plasma to move freely. So, keeping the hydrostatic, hydrostatic pressure equivalent on both sides, so preventing <coughs> preventing collapse of space of this. Also, it it is it is help aided to be prevent collapsing by the presence. Of I2 cells which have a negative charge on the wall of blood sinusoid, so prevent the collapse of hepatic blood sinusoid. Now we have finished our talking about hepatocyte and its function related to blood sinusoid and space of this. Let's return to our classification of hepatocyte. We have mentioned before that we are going to have a classic hepatic lobule which was hexagonal in shape. We was having liver acinus, which was diamond in shape. The third part or the third classification is according to bile, which is called portal lobule. We are going to have a portal lobule, which is a triangular mass of liver from three, three adjacent liver lobule. Can you see here? We are drawing triangle from the central vein to the periphery, central vein to the periphery, central vein to the periphery, and it make a triangular mass. This triangular mass contain in the center portal tract area. 
this triangle uh, this triangular mass in the center contain a portal tract area so it is called portal lobule can i ask you what is the shape of classic hepatic lobule think it is hexagonal in shape excellent containing central vein in the center what about the liver acinous liver acinous walls diamond in shape containing a vascular core in the center what about portal lobule portal lobule is a triangular mass from adjacent three classic hepatic lobule containing portal tract area the center so what is portal lobule portal lobule is classified according to the drainage of bile it drains bile into the bile duct in the portal tract so what is the flow of the bile it will be in the opposite direction to that of the blood flow here now we are going to talk about one of the exocrine function of the liver which is bile senses and allowing bile flow we mentioned that bile is flow from the center to the periphery this is the direction of the bile flow this bile flow will be opposite to the direction of blood bile is synthesized by hepatocyte and released through bile canaliculi to flow through the duodenum in order to digest fat. We mentioned before, if you remember in the previous slides, that we are going hepatocyte faces. One of the faces was hepatocyte facing another hepatocyte, forming a bile canaliculi. There was no other cell. So, first stage of the formation of the bile flow is the formation of bile canaliculi, which was hepatocyte facing another hepatocyte. This hepatocyte was joining each other by zonular occludence to prevent the flow of bile to the intercellular space and protect the liver from being digestion by the bile. Now we are going to talk about bile formation and bile flow, which is going to see the biliary passage. Biliary passage is started by the bile canaliculi, which is going to join to form a larger canal, which is called canal of hearing at the periphery of the classic hepatic lobule. More joining to form a bile duct tube, which will collect to go in the portal tract area in the form of bile duct. This bile duct will accumulate to form an intrahepatic bile duct. This is going to go out of the liver in order to join the duodenum through extrahepatic bile duct, which is going to have right and left joining together to form a common hepatic duct. After joining the gold bladder, they are going to form a common bile duct. Let's see our bile flow and uh, talk about each canal uh, each duct separately the first step in the formation of biliary passage was bile canaliculi bile canaliculi as we see before it was lined by hepatocyte which containing microvilli in the center in order to increase the surface area this microvilli was joining together by tight junction or occluding junction which seal the bile canaliculi separately this was the bile, uh, bile canaliculi with no special lining, no specific lining. It was lined by hepatocyte, and the evidence was that the presence of microvilli and don't miss the presence of continuous tile junction in order to prevent leaking of bile into the intercellular space. After this bile canaliculi, now we have finished bile canaliculi, which is going to be to become a true duct. This true duct was calling canal of herring. This canal of herring, as we see here in this dimension, is formed partially by hepatocyte as, as bile canaliculi and partially by loocuboidal cell. This loocuboidal cell is called cholangiocyte. Can you guess this is a herring canal? It is partially cholangiocyte, partially by hepatocyte. Can you guess what is the importance of this? They say that this cholangiocyte is going to be the stem cell niche of the liver if there is any damage in the liver this cholangiocyte which is a stem cell is going to be differentiated into liver cell and bile cell this was the uh, bile canaliculi which joined together to form canal of hearing and this was canal of hearing and its importance don't mean that the ciliar lining of the biliary passage is an important and it is one of the important question in your exam what is the epithelial lining of canal of hearing? It is lined by hepatocyte and partially by low cuboidal cells. Now, 
Hearing canal, canal is going to, uh, to join its other to form a larger canal at the periphery of the classic hepatic lobule, which is called by the tule. Hearing canal, as we remember, was lined by cholangiolocuboidal cell and hepatocyte, but here by the tule is going to be lined by locuboidal cells. And so that it is like hearing canal, it contains stem cell because the locuboidal cell of the bile ductule is similar to that of the hearing canal, and we think that both of them are considered stem cell. Bile ductule are going to join to form larger duct, which will be present in the portal tract area, which will be the bile duct. And here, the locuboidal epithelium enlarged to become cuboidal cell, and here it is larger duct, so it will be surrounded by its connective tissue seeds. This duct will be found in the portal tract area. This duct is going to accumulate or gather together to form larger one and join together to, and join together to give us another bile duct inside the portal tract is going to gather and became larger and forming a larger intrahepatic bile duct. This intra larger intrahepatic bile duct is going to be lined by columnar epithelium and also will be surrounded by connective tissue to be characteristic than that of the bile duct it is going to have some smooth muscle fiber this was intrahepatic after that this is going to go outside the liver and will form extrahepatic bile duct this extrahepatic bile duct is right and left hepatic duct what is the epithelium lining like that of the uh, intrahepatic bile duct? It is the same. Simple columnar epithelium surrounded by connective tissue and some smooth muscle fiber. This right and left is going to join each other to form the common hepatic duct. So the common hepatic duct joined together by extrahepatic right and left duct. And finally, joining the duct of the gold bladder. The cystic duct of the, for, the good blood are forming the common bile duct, and which is also common hepatic duct, will be lined by simple columnar epithelium, which will be surrounded by connective tissue and the smooth muscle fiber. After joining the cystic duct, it is going to open into the duodenum. As we are going to open into the duodenum, we will take the epithelium lining of the duodenum. So, after common bile duct is going to have an epithelium lining, which is simple columnar epithelium with goblet cells and it will be surrounded by also by connective tissue and smooth muscle fiber so what is gold bladder what is the structure histological structure of the gold bladder the gold bladder is like git gastrointestinal tract tube it will be formed of layers four layers but here it is not a part of gastrointestinal tube so this four layer is going to be Modulated in here, here we are going to have an hematoxylin section for the gold bladder. It is an empty sac. Is it a tube? It is a luminous organ. So that's the intestinal tract was having four layers, which will be modified here in the gold bladder, not to be four layers, it is going to be three layers. What are the three layers here? We are going to here have here mucosa. Muscle layers, no submucosa, and finally, as it is not covered by peritoneum, we are going to have a fibrous coat. So, what are the layers of the gold bladder mucosa? Muscle layers and fibrous coat. Can you see here mucosa? Mucosa is formed of epithelium and connective tissue called lamina propria. Can you see epithelium? What is the epithelium characteristic of the mucosa? Let's go to talk about gold bladder epithelium what about the epithelium of the gold bladder can you see here do you remember the photo the epithelium was showing highly folded it will increase the surface area for absorption it will be absorbed of simple columnar epithelium this simple columnar epithelium it is a single layer of epithelium this single columnar epithelium is a single layer of epithelium what does this epithelium is going to do this epithelium is going to absorb and secrete. It is going to absorb water. So it is simple columnar absorption in order to concentrate bile. What it's, it's also going to secrete some component inside the bile. So it is simple columnar absorptive and secretory. And this epithelium is resting on 
basement membrane and the basement membrane then is loose connective tissue which is called the corium or lamina propria so can you see the electromicroscopic photo of this epithelium yes here this is the electromicroscopic photo of this epithelium what can you see it is simple columnar epithelium it has many lateral interdigitation can you see here in this region in this region there is many lateral interdigitation why to allow absorption of water because this is going to concentrate by what in the apical part what can you see in the apical part you are going to see microvilli by electromicroscopic photo of the epithelium of the mucosa of the gallbladder it is showing microvilli showing many intercellular spaces showing many intercellular spaces in order to increase the surface of absorption of water through absorption of sodium through sodium potassium bomb as i mentioned bomb this means that we are going to have many mitochondria so gallbladder epithelium is characterized by having microvilli mitochondria and many intercellular space and then we are going to have muscle layers muscle layers of the gallbladder can you guess is it a doing the peristaltic movement no muscle layers of the gallbladder would be a regular smooth muscle fibers why in order to contract in all direction to squeeze the bladder to empty the bile into the duodenum. and finally we are going to have adventitia or very muscular which is a fibrous coat which is dense connective tissue it is not covered by proteinium. Okay, so can you guess the function of the good bladder? Yes, it's a function of good bladder is concentration, absorption of water. So this is the function of absorptive simple columnar cell. Also, it will add mucus materials into the bile, so it is secretory. So the function of good bladder secretion and absorption. So with having simple columnar absorptive cilium which is absorptive and secretory contraction of the smooth muscle fiber will lead to evacuation of the good bladder it's uh, good bladder into evacuation of bile into the duodenum this is going to be under control of a hormone called cholecystokinin which will be released by enteroendocrine cell inside the gastrointestinal tract this cholecystokinin will stimulate the smooth muscle fiber in the muscle coat of the good bladder causing the cold bladder to contract and evacuate its bile into the duodenum so bile can going to digest food by this by this we are coming to our end of this lecture for today we talk about the liver uh, as a stroma and parenchyma we say that the parenchyma is in the form of hepatocyte we talk about the hepatocyte structure by light microscopic and electron microscopic we talk about the phases of hepatocyte we also talk about the faces as we are talking about the faces we talk about blood sinusoid we're talking about space of this and the lining of blood sinusoid and this, what can we find in space of this this is an important point you have to cover finally we we'll talk about the bile flow and talk about biliary passage and lastly we we'll talk about the gold bladder i have to memorize you to take care of that there is a hepatocyte organization According to many functions, was having the classic hepatic lobule, was having the portal lobule and liver acinus. But here we came to our end. I wish you good luck and study hard. I I wish you best wishes in your exam. Thank you and see you.